Hello, my name is Mark Anthony Dubose Jr. And I was born July 4th, 1986. Today I'm gonna talk about something that I think uh, a lot of us are needing some assistance with with our dogs. And that comes down to, how the heck do I get my dog to come back to me? I always have to have a treat, I have to have a toy, I have to have this, I have to have that. Why don't, why don't they just come to me? And, and right up front, I'm gonna talk a little bit about why I think that, I think that, I pretty much know because I see the same scenario over and over again and I watch it. I go to the dog parks and I watch it. I just verify and study and I don't know what it is with me. I know a lot of people like me in this way. Is we like watching some people sometimes to see what they're doing, see what's going on. And in reality for me to only be able to get better and better at my job, I have to continue to keep watching people with their dogs and figure out like, what are you doing and what are we doing to keep having these issues go on? So, so the main thing that I want to talk about is the story about or the storyline behind why I believe we are all struggling with having a good recall with our dogs. It, it, it's based on, and it starts with a bad relationship with the dog not understanding what it is that we're looking for from them. And the bad relationship being that when you have that dog try to come to you, the dog is confused of what the heck is going on. And so the main thing is where I see this start is where you allow your dog to go into the backyard. I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. I don't, it doesn't matter. It's what's gonna happen next is what matters. But you let your dog in the backyard to go to the potty. You let them do what they do. Go play, go, 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 whatever. I'm busy right now, you just go do what you gotta do by yourself and I'll be in here and everything's fine. So your dog goes out there. This happens usually when we first get our dogs. When we first have the animal in, in our house and it, and it starts from there because we, we put them out there and we notice that they're running out there, they're having a good time. They're having a blast, they're just having so much fun. And then it comes down to the time, it's like, okay, it's time that we as humans are like, oh, it's time to come in. So then we open that back door up and we call the name. We say, hey, hey, Susan, Susie, I don't know what name to use right there. We're just gonna use Susie. Hey Susie, come on in. And a dog looks at you like, no, not yet. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's happening. We gotta teach them what we want, but they don't know what's going on right there. And we as humans, you know what we do? We assume. And we assume that everything that we say, the dogs automatically already know. And we should stop assuming some things with them because realizing that dogs are a completely blank slate. So when we say the name, Susie, and a dog doesn't come, the first thing we do is, okay, well, I'm gonna come get you now. So you go, they, you go get them. Now the dog goes into this chasing game. The chasing game of, it's cute at first. Oh, come here, girl, come here, girl. Come on, come on, everything's good, come on over here. And then it turns into where we start to get frustrated. We get frustrated, now the animal is looking back at us. That dog is looking at us like, this, you're having fun too, because the dog is confused. It doesn't understand that your frustration is like a, a negative. It just thinks your frustration is, it's fun. It's, it's, we're, 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 we're starting to really have a blast here. So the main thing is, you start off slow, and it starts off cute. Oh, please come. And then it turns into a little bit of like, come, come. And then it turns into like, you better get here now. And then it turns into like, you're just mad. And you'll, you'll yell at the dog. You'll lash out at the dog. The dog is going to look back at you still when you do that and smile like, <laughs> we having fun. Everything's good to go. And you're just so confused because you're so mad. And then you finally get to that dog, and then you put hands on that dog. You handle that dog. You mishandle the dog on accident because of the frustration that you're in. That's why it's something that we as humans, we just mess up. It just is what it is, people. And we, we just recognize that we are not the most all patient, all being, all supreme beings on this planet. We, we have flaws. And we have flaws and we have issues. And the one thing that's so great about all this is since we have flaws and since we mess up on some things, we can bounce back from it. We can come back and have greater later than where it is that we started. But the main thing is we, we, we put hands on that dog and we grab that dog and we get him and we drag him and we put him in the house. And once you do that once, you know, it's all right. But five or six times of doing that, the dog is gonna start to look at you like, I'm never coming back to you because of that scenario right there. He's like, we could play chase. She's like, we could do that all day, but I'm not gonna let you next time get me. You're not gonna get me next time. And that's why the dog is gonna go even harder and piss you off even more, get you even more frustrated, and get you even more enraged. Because he's like, he doesn't wanna get to that point that we finally get caught. Because he doesn't know what the heck's going on here. He's thinking this is the game that he wants and he's gonna make it last as long as he can. But the biggest thing here is we have to do something different. We have to change from that, that behavior. And that's not only just in the backyard. That's at the dog park. That's, that's any scenario, anywhere, any situation. That's the dog being on the bed with you and you're trying to get him to get down and you, you grab him because they said no to you and, and you just throw him off the bed. And, and any scenario like this that we do that, that we, we, get, that we get close to the dog and we mishandle that dog because of a frustration that we're in. And it's, it's, it is what it is, people. It's all right. Don't, don't, I'm gonna point fingers at them because they're like that or point fingers at them like they're like that. No, I'm telling you, I've seen the most trashiest dogs from people that claim to be pearly positive and only train with treats people. I've seen worse dogs in that scenario. I've seen dogs that do not respect people at all when there's no treat involved. 
That means that your relationship is absolute trash, that the dog doesn't care about you, it cares about the treat. And, and that's a very, very unfortunate circumstance. So that means that outside of doing your treat sessions, you're not doing anything to make that dog respect you, respond to you. And, and I've seen people with e-collars and prong collars on our dogs that have way better relationships with their dogs because of they're properly doing what they're doing and that dog is understanding what, what's going on here. So it's not about the tools, it's not about the stuff. It's about the, uh, what I like to say is a naked dog. A me naked with nothing, oh, I got clothes on, but me naked with no treats, no nothing, trying to coerce the dog to do something and the dog naked with no leash, no collar, no nothing so that they know that there's no trickery going on here. So the way that we get around this is we play the game in a different way. Now, I'm gonna have the dog in the backyard and I'm gonna say, hey, Susie, and I'm gonna wait for that dog to give me some sort of response. And if your dog doesn't give you any response, you got a little bit extra to work on here because you've, you've really got a dog that just doesn't care about you at all. But you want the dog to start by at least minimally, minimal saying, hey, Susie, and the dog just gives you like a, hey, what's up? Even though they're not gonna come to you, you want them to at least look at you from a distance. They, they're gonna look at you from a distance. So as soon as they look at you, this is where we are gonna now guide and show the dog what we want. And now is a time that I'm going to walk directly towards the dog. Not in a hostile way, not in a, I'm coming to get you, but just in a, a, a super chill, hey girl, I'm coming to get you. Just, just, just walk and just be, be super calm about it. Be very, very relaxed. And just say, just say her name one time and don't speak at all anymore. Do, do the best of the best of the best of the best to you to just never say anything more out of your mouth. Just stay calm and keep the mouth shut and just walk and be patient. Right now is the time that you need to be the most patient. I'm telling you, this is gonna take 10, 15 minutes and more likely, and it's gonna feel like five hours, but it may take you a half hour all the way up to an hour. But 10, 15 minutes is usually about where, where you're at. For me, I've noticed it's, it's that five, six, seven minute range where dogs are just, they finally just stop. But you're gonna start to walk in their direction in a calm way, just, just super calm, just chill, just, just relax. If you gotta do it, and you can set this up at any time, Throw some headphones in, put a good feel song on, and just get to walking and get to dancing and get to, I'm coming to get you, Susie, but don't speak anything loud out though. I'm telling you, that's the key to success is to speed it up. When you're doing all the talking, it, it's going to add too much that we don't need. So just, just chill. So you're going to walk to the dog. And when you keep on walking, be patient and be calm. And when that dog finally gets to the point, it starts at a 10. They're chasing, they're running, they're like, ah, let's play this game. But you're not going to ever amp your step up. You're not going to ever even slow more down. You're just going to do the same consistent pace and keep walking, keep walking, keep walking. The dog's going to eventually get real close to it. You think you can get it? Don't try to do the whole speedy catchy thing. I'm telling you, your dog is faster than you times 10. So just if they stop in front of you, you're just going to, and if they take off, take off and don't have it in your mind then I'm going to grab the dog in any way. Because most dogs got collars on them and stuff. Don't think that you're going to grab that collar. It's a waste of time, waste of effort. Just Get close to the dog. At the moment, it's gonna go from 10, the dog's gonna drop to an eight, the dog's gonna get to a six, the dog's gonna get to a four. When the dog gets to a two, it's gonna be walking around with you now. And it's more likely gonna walk right in front of you. And now we can communicate. Now we can talk. Now we can do something. In those other states, when they're super high and super anxiety and super, super chaos, we're, we're not doing anything. We're not going anywhere. But as soon as we can get them getting calmed down, now we're, we're actually getting somewhere. And the main thing is we re remain calm the entire time. We don't change our pitch. We don't change. We don't change when we see them finally slow down and we get close and you lean down and try to pet them and they take off. You still just whew, let it go and just keep on going, doing what you're doing. What you're going to notice is the dog is going to eventually stop. The dog is going to eventually just come close to you. The dog is going to eventually show you some affection because it's trying to figure out what the heck's going on. The dog's like, okay, we're not playing chase. We're not doing that no more. We're not doing this. Then what are we doing? So the dog is going to just have no choice but to come to you and or just lay down and just be chill. The dog's going to just lay there and you go up to that dog. You know what you do with that dog when he gets there? You pet him. You pet him. You just give him pets. Five, ten seconds. It's a good boy. Good girl. Good Susie. Good girl. You're such a good girl. Such a real nice girl. And then you get up and you walk away. Just walk away. Now we do it again. You go to the back door. You don't go in the house, but you just go away, get 20 feet from them and just say their name again. Hey, Susie, the dog's gonna look at you extremely confused, like, what the heck's going on? Because they don't know. Don't take it as a thing of disobedience. They just don't know. Now, when they know, and they've been coming to you for 100 times, successful and reliable, yeah, now I'm gonna be a little irritated. Like, dude, come, come here. I'm like, why aren't you here yet? Like, what's going on? But at first, you say the name again, and you do this over again. If the first time it took you six minutes, the second time's gonna take you two minutes. And then you get to the dog, you lean down, 
you give the dog pets and you say, good girl, that's a good Susie. I like you, you're doing real nice. You're so pretty, you're so awesome. And you get up and you walk away. Third time, you try to get 20 feet away again, you say the name again, hey Susie, and she's gonna look at you and for the first time, more than likely, take a couple of steps towards you. As soon as they take a couple of steps towards you, that's when you're gonna say, hey, good girl, I like what I see, I like what's going on. And then you're gonna make it super inviting. Don't be inviting on leaning this way, but just be inviting of like, hey, how's it going? What's going on? The lean back and having your body exposed like this, I don't know what it is, but dogs love it. And if you wanna get a dog to run to you and jump and get all on you, just do that right there, just, just this motion. Dogs look at you like, <laughs> we want to have some fun right now. But if you do this, it's a little scary to the dogs. They're just, they're, they're always like suspicious, like what's going on here? So on that third time, more than likely, the dogs don't look at you and she's gonna take a couple of steps. And, and you're gonna encourage her to come to you, or him, but you're gonna encourage them at that moment. Good job, good job, yes, yes, good girl, good girl, good girl. And you're gonna get low, you're gonna do what you do, or get down. You're gonna get low, you're gonna do what you do, and, and you're gonna be super excited to try to convince them to come to you. And then if they don't, if they walk five or six steps and then they stop, and then they turn around to go back into this, this weird stuff, that's when you're going to continue the same thing again. You're gonna walk to them. You're gonna be calm, you're gonna be patient, you're gonna be chill, you're gonna be relaxed. And the first time was six minutes, then two minutes, and then, then the next one was pretty much instant but didn't quite get it. The next one is gonna be instant and instant and instant again. And the main thing is stay calm. Stay calm and be patient, and be patient, and be calm, and be calm, and be calm. And the one thing I'm gonna say is that really helps out a lot is to have someone else with you from the outsides. So have your husband, your wife, your kids, anything. I mean, be on the phone even. This, you, know, you don't need to have somebody. Somebody, you just ain't got nobody there all available with you in the moment. But you can do this with somebody on the phone. They need to coach you through this. To say, hey, it's okay, be calm, be calm. That's my main job that I'm doing when I'm working with people. It's all right, chill out. I can see when you start to get like, mm, I don't know, calm, relax. It's good, it's gonna happen. Everything's gonna come through, it's gonna follow through. I'm promising you this, it's gonna follow through. It works every single time, it's gonna follow through. So chill. Just relax. Have someone coach you through that. When they can see that you start to get a look, especially if you got a spouse, significant other, partner, boyfriend, girlfriend, anything like that, that they're, the, they're gonna be the best to guide you through this because they, can, they know you when you're frustrated. And they can see it instantly. And if they can get into your brain when you're instantly getting a little frustrated, they're gonna be able to help you, slow you down so that you could just get back into doing what you're doing. Because this is, this is a method that I'm telling you it works and it works so beautifully that I don't need to rely on equipment or anything or any anything. And then I start doing this with bigger and bigger distractions instantly. I'm no longer in the backyard. I'm at the dog park. I'm at, the, I'm at a, a different kind of park. I'm at a trail. I'm, I'm somewhere. I'm at, I'm, I'm at the, the, the zoo. I went to a park today that had donkeys and everything out there. I was like, man, this is a training facility out here. Someone needs to, to, to get, a, get a, take advantage of. But the biggest thing is, usually on that fourth or fifth time is when the magic starts to happen. Where the dog finally, you say their name and they just come directly up to you and you just give them pets. Pets, 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 pets. And you start to get real good success. And this here is a time that I start to implement using some sort of treat. But the biggest thing here is not having no treats on you, but having a word to signify and getting the dogs to understand this. This is, this is how I personally give treats to my dogs. I don't have anything on me ever, but I have them somewhere where they know where we, there's some at. So I can say to them, hey, you guys want a treat? You want a snack? You want, you want, you want something to eat? You want a bone? You, you, you want something? So I have a words like that that I can say. Not, I'll get y'all a little bit. I'm sorry, I'm saying too much. But uh, you have something where you say. So that's the time when you're in that backyard and the dog, you say, hey, Susie, and she comes up to you and you give her pets. Yeah, yeah, good girl, good girl. That's the time when you say, hey, you want a treat? You want a snack? You want something? You want a bone? You, you, you want something? And then you walk her or him into the house, into the place, into the area where you have the treat, and then you get the treat and you give the dog the treat. You don't keep them on you. You keep them in a location, and the, having them in a similar location is going to be ideal at first. So the dog will beat you there. So that's where you end up getting the dog's brain to understand, okay, if I come to them, I'm gonna one, get pets, everything's good. And if I come faster, we may as a team go and get a treat together. And I'm gonna say, hey, you know, that, that might happen. It might not always happen, but it might be worth it to you to try it out to see if that's gonna come or not. And that's something that is a beautiful thing to keep into the dog's brain. Because it's not that they're coming directly to you and there's a treat to you. No, they're coming to you 
because you are the start of being able to have the access to the treat. You're not just the treat. That's where we get confused. Literally, standing here with the treat like this. You're behind the treat at this moment. You want to be ahead of the treat. And most of us with our dogs, we're, we're behind the treat. The treat is there, dog gets it, and it's gone. And you're just like, dang, I didn't even get a chance to pet you. Like, you just took the treat and just took off. Like, what the heck's going on here? You're, you're behind the treat. And you want to make sure that you are the one that's giving access to that treat to the dog because they're doing something that you're looking for. And that's how you speed things up. You don't speed it up by just treat, 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 treat. No, you speed it up by making sure that they're doing what you're looking for, and then you give it to them later. And, and, and my understanding of playing and doing stuff with dogs, later, it can be minutes to even hours later. Like I can say now treats, and these guys are all looking at me like, I want a treat, I want a treat. They're going to know they're going to more than likely get it by the end of the day. And that's good enough. They, it's locked in their brain. And they're like, I'm going to get it at some point because I did something at some time. And I'm like, yeah, man, you keep, you keep doing with this, what I'm, this is where I'm going to say the, the words that people don't like is the manipulation. That's where this stuff works really good with dogs because it just gets their brains fixated on something. They can only fixate on one thing. And I want them to be fixated on listening to me doing good for me and you get this later on. And then they're just like, I, I, can, I can do that. I can, I can continue to keep doing that. I've done this with dogs and walk hours and hours to keep a dog good on leash, knowing that they are gonna get something good at the way end of it. Not along the way or not even before it, but way at the end, they're gonna finally get something. And that finally get something might be just a basic, simple meal that they're gonna be able to eat today that I'm gonna be guaranteed giving to them. A dog will work so much just to know that it could be able to have a chance to go inside of a crate and eat its food all by itself in peace and just enjoy it. And the dog's like, man, I, that, that, that's good. That's us being ahead of the treats and the food, not being behind it. We want to make sure that the dogs are doing for us. And I'm telling you, this, this simple way to be able to get your dog to understand a recall is going to give you the best recall. There's, there's no amount of pressure you can put on a dog to force them to come to you. There's none. You can, because all the pressure does is it goes up and up and up. And pressure meaning, trying to slap an e-collar on the dog, trying to use a prong collar on the dog, trying to slap a slip leash on the dog, trying to slap a harness on the dog, trying to put a martingale on the dog, trying to put anything on the dog, trying to have a, a liver treat on, on you all the time, trying to force them to come to you. Any kind of pressure. All that pressure is not gonna work because there's always something more greater. But you know what to the dogs is the most greatest thing? Is us. We are the most positive things to the dogs. Not the extra stuff, but it's us. And it's something that we should be focusing majority of our times with the dogs are making us ourselves as the high value item. Not what I have in my hands, not what's in my pockets, but me, my presence, myself is the most high value item to the dog. And that's how you have an absolutely premium dog and doesn't need no sit stays, down stays. It doesn't need no play stays. It doesn't need nothing. All it needs is your presence. And that dog is going to be like, just, I got everything I need. I'm good to go. What more do I need? I got my man. I got my woman. I got my, my caretaker. I've got them. That's all that matters. And that's when you start to come run into a scenario where things are just absolutely beautiful. And I'm telling you, the start of all of these things to get a really nice dog is patience and calmness and being chill. And just having, in reality, a, a horse trainer that says something to me that just I'll never forget. Having, in reality, zero expectations. The man was loading a horse in a trailer. He's like, I don't care if he goes in. I don't care if he doesn't. We're going to do something. We're going to do this to see what he's, he wants, see what he's going to do. He has zero expectations of trying to get that horse into that trailer. Just like you should have zero expectations of having a perfect recall the first time you say their name. Have zero expectations. Just know that... This is gonna work. This is gonna work. If I follow through with this, and if I stay calm, this is gonna work. Because that's why the dogs will always come to us, because they're like, you are, you're safe, you're, you're good. They get confused because of how things started. Things usually start off very rocky in a way that, like I said, we just mishandle them because we, have, we go into well, rages of frustration. And, and I'm telling you, and I'm almost gonna pretty much guarantee you that if your dog doesn't instantly come to you all the time, it's because you more than likely have done that once before. And, and there's nothing that we should beat ourselves up about, nothing that we should be ashaming each other about, blaming each other about. Just we need to understand what it is that's going on so that we can fix it. And the only way we can fix things is by knowing what it is that we're doing and knowing what's going on. And knowing that everything isn't perfect that we've done. When we tried this and we tried that, you may have tried too many treats, you may have tried too many toys. Did you got your dog to start to get a little, little weird with you? The dog's gonna run up to you for that treat and he's looking at you like, well, what are you going to do? Because there may have been a time you gave him a treat to do something that the dog thought was inappropriate. Touch them wrong or 
took him to the vet and, and he had a certain type of treat like that from the vets and they started sticking them and sticking stuff in his butt and he's like, oh, what the heck's going on here? And he's like, I'm not going next to that treat. Like, I'm gonna take that treat and run away as fast as possible. Like, the, things get set up with dogs that is just confusing sometimes. So that's why the, the number one thing that we wanna make sure the dogs are cool with is just us. Because when it's just us, there's, there's no trickery going on here. And you just wanna pet the dog. So again, I'm gonna say it. You say the name and you just walk calmly, calmly. You just walk. You walk, you walk, you walk. It's easiest if you're not in a dog park that's five acres big, that it's just a smaller backyard that's like a, what, 100 by 60. So you don't have to walk like so much, but if you're a walker like me, then go to the dog park and do this, go one, because that's gonna fast track things for you. You can get your dog to come back in the dog park where there's 100 dogs in there and 50 other people in there and everyone's running and playing and you do this drill and your dog, you're able to get them to you after the fourth or the fifth time, you can get your dog out of pretty much anything, anything. And that, that, that is going to give you a very, very nice, very, very, very nice dog. Because the dog's going to come to you knowing that all it has to do is come to you, and then it's going to go off and do, does what it does again. It just has not a check-in, a check-in, a check-in. And then here and there, it's going to come in, and you're going to leash him back up and say, okay, now we're headed on out of here. And the dog's not going to be nervous or scared. He's going to know what the rules are. It's going to be very simple. So you're just going to walk so calmly. And I'm telling you, get someone on the sidelines to be able to speak out to you, to be able to coach you when they see that you're starting to get frustrated. Because you will. It just, it is what it is. And have someone to coach you through that. On the phone, a person there, someone to be able to help you and guide you, to keep you motivated to just stay on task doing what you're doing. And give it at least three times. Because I'm telling you, you're gonna see a significant change in that dog. They're gonna no longer just run away. They're gonna no longer just, just try to evade you. They're no longer gonna, you're gonna get close and they're just gonna take off. They're gonna finally come in and just start to show you affection because they're just confused. And we can get that confusion out of the dog so fast by just showing them what we're looking for. And I'm telling you, this, this, this works, it works. And if it's not working, it's because you're getting frustrated. And the one thing that you can do is slap a camera up and put it there and watch yourself. Am I getting frustrated? Because that's the number one way that's gonna slow this down and just destroy it. This works, I, I, I do this with dogs that I don't even know, that don't know me, that I've walked into dog parks with dogs that I've never worked, trained, and nothing with, and, and we're able to get the dogs to come to me and to come to me and come to me and come to me. And then, okay, you're here, leash you up and let's go, here's your owner. I've done this to many of the dogs and it, 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 it builds that, the dog to understand that we're safe, I'm safe, you're safe. Everything's good. I don't care what used to happen, used to be. This is what I'm looking for when I say your name. And that, that, it, that builds something that, that is more than trickery. It builds trust. You want your dog to trust you. And when your dog trusts you, it's gonna do anything in any, any scenario. I don't care, squirrel, rabbit, chicken, duck. I don't care. They're gonna come to you every single time because they know what's the best and what's the greatest. And that's the only way that I've been able to get, it, especially this specific dog here, out from, I don't know what it is with these dogs, but they love to take off, at, my neighbor's dog loves the fence fight and run the fence. That's, that's, an, that's like an extreme. That is more than cows and goats and ducks and turkeys and chickens and everything. Dogs fence fighting on, on the fence is a challenging thing. That's why walking dogs in neighborhoods is hard because you got dogs behind fences that are, that are bullying and they're being, they're, they're, the only way I can say it is assholes, man. They're being hard, they're being really hard, putting a lot of pressure on your dog. And the only way I've been able to get them to get out of that is by understanding. I don't, no e-collar work, no prong work, no slip leash work, no nothing work. Nothing worked. And I was trying over and over and over and over trying to figure this out. Putting them in the crate didn't work. That's my go-to for everything. Come back, crate, let them out. That wasn't working. Nothing was work, working. But me actually just physically getting up and walking to them. And it's a distance from here. It's, that, that's, it's, it's a, almost a dang half mile for me to walk all the way back over there and doing what I got to do to get there. So they would go and I would just walk after them and go over there and go get them, give them pets and literally walk back. On the fourth or fifth time, they would just walk back with me. The dog would be right there and they'll just guide, and they'll follow me back to the house. And then once they would follow me back to the house, that's when I started giving treats. I'll go into the house, I'll give them something and then we all get treat, 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 treat. Good job, good job, good job. Now, when they see it, they get like, ooh, something's there. But then they look right back at me like, hey buddy, I might get a treat, let me just hang out. And I was like, cool, let's do that. And that's what they started doing over and over. Now I have zero issue with any of them to do that because I've started with them realizing that I'm safe, I'm good. And then I started to get, implement that treat. I implement that treat once they follow me. They'll come to you, they'll, you say their name, you say Susie, and then they come to you and then you get walking and the dog will just follow you. They're like, okay, well, where are we going? 
what, what are we doing next now? Because especially when you just pet them, pet them, pet them, pet them, let them go. Pet them, pet them, pet them, let them go. Pet them, pet them, pet them, let them go. After a while, the dog's going to say, shucks, I keep getting pets when I go to the next to that person. Let me just stay and marinate in that a little bit longer. And they're like, yeah, do that. And then you get walking. And that dog is going to follow you. When that dog follows you, now you go in the house, you grab you the best treat that you could possibly find, and you give that to the dog. You say, good job. Bam. And that dog's going to look at you like, I can do that again. And I want to continue to keep doing that again. What y'all over here bickering for? Get down. Everybody get down. <laughs> May, why are you all up on Johnny? Uh, Oreo, get down. There's one thing I'm gonna say that I just can't get this guy's comment out of my head. Do something with your dogs. That's how you have a nice dog. We all got dogs in the beginning because we wanted to do something. Figure out what that's something that you wanted from them and start doing that. It's that simple to have a really nice dog. Just get up and do it, make it happen. That's everything that I'm gonna talk about in all my training methods are gonna be us doing something not just sitting back thinking that I'm going to watch this video and all of a sudden everything is going to be magically fixed or I'm going to be able to have enough money to pay to somebody to make all my issues go away. Your issues are not going to go away. It's for us to get up and to do something. And the more that we just get up and do something, the faster you're going to see what it is that you're looking for. And then you're no longer going to have to say, get up and do something so much, so often anymore. And that's the difference of the training that I'm going to talk about compared to the training that I see with all the sit stays with the treats and stuff. I'm teaching my dog to be calm and to be relaxed. The other way is teaching your dog to be excited and to be like this psychotic athlete that's just always on the go, always on a mission, always on like, what are we doing? It's party time all the time. I don't wanna train my dog to do that unless I want my dog to do that for a purpose and for a need. That's what I do with this dog here. This dog here is for a purpose and a need. I have to get him and I want him and I continuously want him jazzed up. That's why when I talk loud, I get crazy. I, get, I can get irritated and frustrated. And this dog is activated. He's like, let's do something. You know why? Because I'm irritated when the go goats aren't where they're supposed to be. I'm irritated when the cows aren't where they're. I'm irritated when the chickens and the roosters aren't where they're supposed to be. So I've, I've learned and he's learned with me that my irritation means let's go do something. I mean, let's go do, I mean, we go, we go 100 when I get irritated. Because it's hard for me not to be irritated when I got a goat in my neighbor's field just running the food. When I got a pig in my neighbor's field just running the food, I'm like, get over here. And, and it's a beautiful pairing that me and him have. But that's not what we want with a pet dog. That's what we want with a working dog. So if you want a working dog to go do competitions and to go do these things, then go ahead and get that and do that. But if you want a pet dog to hang out with, to relax with, don't use the same methods to get the dog super happy, super jazzed up, super insane, super psychotic, to think that that's gonna translate to being able to have a calm dog. It just doesn't work that way. The dog's gonna go through its work session, get tired, and then it's gonna get back into, I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied again, so I'm ready to work again now. And it's gonna go right back into crazy mode. So it's gonna either be sleep or in, in just crazy mode. You don't want that. You want your dog to be able to be awake and be good to go. And that's, for me, the number one thing I'm gonna say is it takes for us to get up and have to do something. And to get up and do the small, simple things. The small, little things. The things sometimes that kind of just irritate us, but we have to just get it done anyways. And the more that we get up when we're just a little irritated and do it anyways, the better off you're gonna be. The, the faster you're gonna find the, the results that you're looking for. The results of being able to have a nice, calm dog that just comes to you. Because there's so much I could talk about with getting dogs to be calm. And I'm gonna continue to keep talking about this because there's, there's so much that, that we're, we're, we're missing. And it comes down to having the right methods. And the right methods for me just come from me just, I, I, I don't know how, what, what else, is, I, there's no information out here about this stuff. There's no, there's no training plan to teach you how to get a proper relationship with the dog. There's plenty of things to teach us how to keep your dog under control and management, but that's not what I want. I want my dog to just respect me because of me, because of my presence. Me, I could be naked in my house, no treats, literally no clothes, no nothing. And my dog is gonna look at me like, Dude, you the best thing ever. And I'm like, cool, man, I appreciate that. I appreciate that, because I think that that's what you are. And then we're gonna really start to be able to move forward and have a great time. Simple stuff to work on. And I hope to be able to help more people out with the simple stuff to have the nice dog, because it really is simple. And, and there's something about this that is getting complicated that I wanna get people away from, because these animals are so simple people. And when we implement simple stuff, we get amazing results. Thank you.